Good morning students. We are discussing on water resource engineering and hydrology. We are learning about water resource planning and the development. In this lecture we will discuss about uh, some of the necessity and the requirement of water resource planning and development. Well, uh, starting with the water resource development. Well, the development of water resources involves conception planning, design, construction and operation from other fields such as economist or the political scientist, geologist, electrical and mechanical engineers etc etc. Well, this, this water resource problems are the interdisciplinary in the nature. Further, each water resource development project encounters a unique set of physical conditions to which it must conform, uh, hence the standard designs leading to the simple solutions applicable to all these projects are rarely available. So the special condition of each project must be met through an integrated application of the fundamental knowledge of the various disciplines. Well, this planning may be defined as the uh, orderly consideration of a project from its conception to the evaluation of various alternatives to the final decision of a course of action. This action includes all the work that associated with the design of a project except the detailed engineering of the structures. It forms the basis for the decision to proceed with a proposed project and hence it is most important aspect of the total engineering for the project. While in the discussion of water resource development and planning, some guidelines for the planning of water resources development project are presented. So let's discuss all these topics and Initially, we will start with the requirement of water resource schemes. Well, planning and management of the water resource systems are essential because uh, this need of planning and management uh, is affected by some factors and those factors that are first that gradual decrease of per capita available water on this planet and especially uh, in our country. Uh, and uh, water being used for many purposes and the demands vary in time to time and space to space. So this uh, variation in water demand also uh, leads us for the better planning and management of water resources that are available. Then water availability in our region like a country or a state or any watershed is not equally distributed then the supply of water maybe from rain maybe from the surface water bodies or maybe from the groundwater so this variation uh, in availability and variation in the supplying of the water will uh, draw us for the proper management and proper distribution of available water so that can supply that water efficiently then severity of the adverse consequences of the drought, maybe of the flood and excessive pollution. So, this may also lead us for the proper management of the water resources. Then the degradation of aquatic and riparian system due to the river training and reclamation of flood plains for urban and industrial development. Also poor water quality due to discharge of uh, pesticides and fertilizer and other wa wastewater effluents etc. Then uh, pot development is also affect the available water resources. So while the pot development requires deeper rivers narrowing the water for shipping purpose that will increase the flood level. So if that not occur or if to pretend uh, that flood situation we should go for the proper planning and management of the available water resource. Then 
the river bank erosion and degradation of the water bank of the river bank and the sediment accumulation in the reservoir due to the poor water quality so because of this factors the requirement of water resource management and planning is necessary well uh, let's see the principles and objectives of water resource planning well this principle and water resource planning are based on uh, three e's system well uh, for a country to change its water management towards a more holistic and integrated management system that will require to review the water policies well uh, this is currently ongoing in many countries worldwide okay a water policy often start with the definition of a small number of basic principles and objectives uh, such as the need of uh, sustainable development and desirable uh, socio economic development uh, well the three key policy principles are known that is as the three e theory and the three e are the first that is the equity second is the ecological integrity and the efficiency while talking about the equity water is a basic need yes no human being can live without a basic volume of fresh water with a sufficient quality where well, humans have the basic uh, right of access to the water resources and this policy principle is this policy is related to the fact that water is often considered as a public goods well water is such a basic requirement and it is uh, needed for the survival that the society has to defend the use of the water resources in the public interest so from here a number of other issues can derive such as the from a number of other issues from here a number of other issues can derive such as uh, uh, security that protege, uh, protection against the flood or drought or uh, any other disasters well okay the next that is the ecological integrity well water resources can only persist in a natural environment that is capable of uh, fresh water of sufficient quality that only this sustainable water use can be allowed such that the future generations will be able to use it in a similar ways as the present generation are using so that is about the ecological integrity and efficiency states that the water resource is a scarce resource it should be used efficiently uh, institutional arrangements should be such that uh, the cost uh, recovery of the water services should be attained this will ensure sustainability of infrastructure and institutions okay here comes in the issue of the water pricing and whether or not water should be priced according to its economic value so that the use of this water resource will be done efficiently okay now uh, there are a few purposes of water resource development projects so let's discuss about that uh, purposes that the water resource development projects are planned to serve the few purposes that are first is flood control well there are various purpo uh, various objectives to be achieved with this purpose that is to reduction of the flood damage the protection of economic development river regulations recharging of the ground water development of power and the protection of flood so these all objectives can be fulfilled by uh, this flood control purpose while the second that is the irrigation the only objective to be achieved uh, from irrigation is that uh, agricultural production the various works and measures that are adopted to achieve uh, the irrigation uh, and that is for the dams from the reservoirs and wells and canals etc the third that is the hydroelectric power well uh, from the hydroelectric power uh, we can achieve uh, the generation of hydroelectric powers 
that is kind of electricity and the various works and measures are adopted to achieve uh, this electricity and these are the dams, reservoir, pan stock, the power cap, power channels, power plants, transmission lines, etc. Then the navigation. While well, transportation of goods and passengers is the only objective to be achieved in this case. While well, the various works and measures adopted to achieve uh, the navigation, those are dams, reservoirs, canals and all that kind of uh, water bodies such as uh, harbor also. Okay, then uh, domestic and industrial water supply. Well, from this, uh, the safe and adequate water can be supplied uh, for the domestic, industrial, commercial and the municipality uses. And for that, we use dams, reservoir, wells, conduits, sometimes pumping stations, some treatment plants, distribution systems, etc. Then the watershed development. Well, uh, the watershed development are the conservation and improvement of soil that uh, sediment reduction through the watershed development uh, we can do the conservation and improvement in the soil we can uh, reduction uh, we can make the reduction in the sediments runoff retardation the forest and uh, grassland improvement can also be done by doing this watershed development okay then the recreation well, this recreation is to provide the creational facilities for the health and welfare of the people. Then the fish and wildlife preservation. Well, the objectives to be achieved in this case are improvement of habitat, habitat for the fish and wildlife, prevention of uh, loss of fish and wildlife, the expansion of commercial fishing, etc. Then the next is the pollution abatements. Well, the objectives, well, for the, for this case, the protection or the improvement of water supplies for the domestic, industrial and other purposes uh, to be, other purposes to be done uh, also for the aquatic life and recreation, this, uh, for this purpose is helpful. Then the insect control. The objective is, uh, protection and public health okay as uh, if we control the insects uh, it will lead us for the better health uh, and also it will uh, improve the recreational value the forest crops and lands okay so the various works and measures includes the proper design and operation of reservoirs and uh, extermination measures also there are a few purposes such as the drainage sediment control salinity control salinity control artificial precipitations employment then public works acceleration and some new water resources policies so these are the purposes of water resource development projects so by executing uh, such projects for the water resources development all these objectives or all these purposes can be fulfilled i hope students you understand uh, this lecture properly. Okay. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.